Hi, YouTube. We're excited. Hi, I know. We're so oh. fucking excited. I'm, I'm, I'm fucking thrilled. I'm so thrilled, SP. <laughs> two weeks, brother. Two weeks. So much hype. Oh, I'm already getting wet for you, man. I'm already dripping all over. <laughs> but we're so excited to get into it. SP, I know you've seen the trailer, yeah? I've seen it twice, but every time I see it, it's just... Mm. You've seen it twice already? Ooh, well, it's a minute, yeah. 22 seconds. Yeah, um, it's not that long. I am... I, I don't know how else to say it. I'm thrilled. I am thrilled to get into this. I'm really curious where this is going to go. So, SP, I kind of want to ask you. You want to give any more hints about the rap before we even get started or not? Is that, are you going to hold on to those until we actually jump into season two? The rat is a slow cooker. Mm. The rat is something that will be many years in the making. So and many years in the making. So not season two, core two. No, it's, it's a cooker. The rat's a cooker. My man, I was already starting to develop theories as to how this could come into play and how there might be a fucking random rat person or rat god or, you know, <laughs> you're fucking cooking me up a fucking ratatouille, brother. Oh, well, I I'm... Mean, it ex depends how you classify some things. We could say there's a bit of a naughty rat in Core 2 that gets up to mischief. Hmm. Hmm. Mm. Mm. why do you do this to me why do you do this to me all right man should, should, should we get into it let me share my screen yeah. with you let's go ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。
how active of a role is Paul going to be in their life or like as a grandparent, if they do have kids? I think that's a good question. I think looking at Paul as a father role model, I think, yeah, I think he'll definitely be a very intricate role in Rudy's journey going forward and some of the decisions that he makes. And as a father, you know, if Rudy was to become a father, will he have that same imprinting and, Paul being there to see all that. It's, I, I think it'll be very interesting for you to see how that plays out and that impact that Paul has on him I hope going you know. forward. I hope you know. You just made my heart sink all the way down, brother. You've just made my heart sink all the way down. Why's that? You danced around that question in such a beautiful way. You've been practicing. You have been practicing, my friend. I asked a question. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was so good, but that did not. Yeah, Even- I love I love the way chat was like, he actually said the truth, but at the same time, it was so misleading. It was my best work yet. <laughs> color me dumbfounded right because i'm over here like my heart is sunk because i'm like whoa, whoa. Even, even, even 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 night bots like wait sb calm down here calm down. <laughs> <laughs> holy shit <laughs> so it, it, it comes in because just back, I'm gonna back it up just a little bit. I I love doing this with you, man. This is I'm like this is what I missed, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Does that like four to... seconds in? <laughs> I know people are like, well, how can you guys go this fast? Or like, take this as wild. It's when you actually like a series, you can take forever with it. All right. You can. Kazukuto's再会を目指してもいいのだが、その前にやらなければならないことがある。レディにずっと好きでいてもらえるように頑張らないとね。ああ。That oh. gentle smile. <笑>大切なものを取り戻させてくれた。大切なものを取り戻させてくれた。her two friends she's like you know she wants to like do a lot of stuff so it's obvious you know if they're alone in a house a big nice house and they're all cuddly and no one else is around <laughs> like rabbits and, no. and, and, <laughs> like rats <laughs> but i mean rudy's got a couple of years of pent-up emotions going on in him so see but that that's what i'm afraid of sp is Rudy as an individual, has he healed or was this a temporary bandage? And like, I feel like her like coming through and like releasing this emotion from him, it started the process of healing, but he hasn't healed completely. So what happens if he goes through another major trauma? Like, well, that's the thing. What if he has started to heal and then someone comes along and just goes, Welcome to core two. Boom! Hits him down, and then he goes a little bit astray. I mean, this is the final core. This is the end of the story. They live happily ever after. This they is the end of the nothing story. Nothing goes wrong. <laughs> this is this is the final core, guys. Mishu Tensei finished. It's finished. It's done. Hold on, SP. I'm hearing a lot of angry Twitter people writing up a storm to come at you. <laughs> Read it. Oh my god, he's putting the story. It's a bad you, no, you have no idea how many times I've misdirected him in this conversation already, and it's beautiful. But there's truth and there's lies. See, that's the thing with Ed. I never lie to him. I just tell him what I want him to know, and then he's got to path it all together. That's the fun. Because here's my, oh, oh, here's my thing. Now let me throw out the scenario to you, right? And, and and I know that the other trailer hasn't gone up, right? The, the rat is your best work yet. <laughs> You've haunted me for like a year now, brother. Over a year <laughs> with rats. Um, when it comes to this, 
Rudy has started the process of healing. Yes, he has found someone that he can shag with from time to time. Yes, he has found someone that he's calling his wife and whatnot. But what would happen to Rudy if, say, like, Aisha or Norn dies? What would Rudy do if Sylphie is not near him? And say that there's this big, I don't know, like, like an, an Elena Lise there to offer comfort. It's an interesting question because, yeah, I think if Rudy was to have something major happen to him that's a negative on any scale, close or friend or someone was lost, and especially with the connections that he's built, he feels very close to some of even his own friends. What would happen if something went wrong? What would happen if there was betrayal or death or mistrust? Mm -hmm. Any of those things. What if the man god reappears and misdirects him into a pathway that could lead to something absolutely horrific. What would that do to someone like Rudy? And so, yeah, it's a question of, you know, as much as he's healing, he's still very fragile. I mean, he's right. still got a lot of pent up issues behind him and he's now just starting to heal. So it's like, as he's starting to get back up, what if he just got pushed even lower? Exactly. Exactly. Oh, oh, Espy, you're running my mind now, brother. Because <laughs> I'm like, I'm theorizing, right? I'm, I, I'm. Wait, does Eris appear this season? One of the chats says uh, Eris appears. I wish Eris appeared this season. I'm not sure if I should answer that. Oh, okay. So in comes in my next question. Still theorizing on this because you were just talking. What if the man got appeared and lowered him down? Are there? other servants of the man god out there because we all we know orston immediately was like oh you're i forgot what he named fucking rudy something of the man disciple god. disciple, disciple yeah. of the man god, i think it's it's around that line but the, the question still stands are there other Apostle. apostles there you go apostles of the man god out there And if so, how would this lead into Rudy sort of kind of being like a weird piece in a chessboard? Because if we think about like everything that's happening, all, all the like wild shit that's going on, he sort of doesn't fit in with the man god and he doesn't really fit in with any anyone or anything else. Rudy is basically a, a piece of cheese in a sandwich between the man god and... Ostead. And I mean, that's obvious from the interactions that the man God had with him when he was killed by Orsted. He outright said that, you know, they're at war and Rudy is just like an in between. The question comes down to how is Rudy going to be pulled either side? It's like in a tug of war sense. Like, Rudy is only going along with the man god because he sees a benefit out of it, but he has a lot of mistrust for the man god. And Orsted, well, he's just absolutely petrified of him because of what he's already done. I mean, you see Nanahoshi and how he freaked out about that. But Nanahoshi and him are friends again. Not friends again, sorry. They're friends now. Um, mm. This word there. So it's like, okay, well, could Nanahoshi be a bridge or could Nanahoshi end up joining Rudy and going against Orsted or will Rudy have to fight both of them because it's a massive conflict that's having a rippling effect? Like, what is Rudy's decision going to be when it comes to them? Because clearly he's going to have to make a decision. It's going to be a make or break. Like, he's either going to have to kill Orsted or mm. fight back against the Man God. That is a clear decision that has been put in the story from the very beginning because the Man God and Orsted two sides that are like unstoppable forces trying to break each other and Rudy has to make a decision so I'm going to throw this out there to you does Orsted have a family or did he just come into being that's a very good question I don't know if the answer really matters because it really has no bearing on the story but I would just say yes and no I mean, at the end of the day, this is a conflict between them that is very personal. It's it's 1v1. It's very, very personal and very deep and looping in a sense of them constantly Whoa. having at each other and tick for tack. The question comes down to what changes the flow of them constantly going at each other. 
like this endless conflict, what will be the changing factor? Is it Rudy? Is it someone else? Or is it a multitude of factors? Hold that... on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. You just said something very fucking interesting. Were you alluding to the man god and Orsted having this back and forth? Because if you were, with, with, with this direct thing that you were saying, now you, my brain is automatically linked into what the fuck, because you're saying yes and no, has the man god done to Orsted or whatever family unit composition, whatever that may be, for this to impale because the way you tried to redirect this and I love it because you've trained yourself masterfully, sir. I'm going to tell you this. You've trained yourself masterfully and your voice inflections have gotten so much better. So much better. I love too. the way you're complimenting. You're like almost like giving me a, like a online blowjob. <laughs> Cause what I'm thinking right here is we're always talking about family and you instantly went into, yeah. Like, you know, like you, you zoom through it and you focus specifically on the battles between Orsted and Man God going back and forward, back and forward. So two things come into mind. Number one, is this family of any importance to anything that's going on in the story or in the world at large? Probably. <laughs> I would say it'd be better to ask, do families play an important role in this conflict? That's a good question. Here's my second question for you. Can gods, for example, can the man god have more than one title of god? I mean, that comes down to how the real world works. I mean, there are many gods, goddesses that have multitude of different titles. There's many different cultures that have the same god, but they give themselves different names. And it's a possibility. But it's also a question of how long has the man god been on the plane of this existence and what kind of rippling effect has he had? Who knows about him? Who doesn't know about him? How well known is he? Or is he very niche of a name? Or is he a big name out there? And if it is a niche name, mm. and if there are a few followers, how dangerous are they? Where are they? Are they just waiting lying or has he got a bigger following that is just waiting to spring up and attack the different levels of it? Also, hold on, SP. We got a raid. Hi, Raiders. Welcome on that. in. Uh, in case you guys don't know, my name's Ed. I'm a psychologist. And here's SP uh, from the wonderful, I was about to say Otaku Spirit. <laughs> It's spiritual analysis. Wow, look at that, SP. Uh, we are analyzing Moshiko Tensei right now. Mimiko, how's your, your stream? I hope you had a good stream. I hope everything went well. So here's here's where I'm I'm gonna throw this ball like ball right back in your court real quick. You ready for this? Because some people mm -hmm. are like, only one person can hold a god title. Okay, but what if I'm like, hi, I'm Ed, I'm the psychology god, and then I'm like, hi. I'm evil Ed, and I take over Ed's mind, and I'm the demon lord god. And then, like, you know, I'm like, oh, hi, I'm Neko Ed, yeah, or some shit, right? Like, w w what if, like, people's, <laughs> people's titles are just dependent upon, like, the roles that they play is essentially what I'm getting at. Shit, evil Ed is, wait, what? Neko Ed is Kamiyoshi? Oh, god, no. Evil Ed? <laughs> But the point that I'm trying to get at is, like, how can we strictly, when it comes to, like, the man god, because you have a point. Uh, how strong is the man god? How many disciples and followers does he have? Uh, if that, right? How good of a, is his following base? And what is it? The, I guess I, I kind of want to limit test him, but that's on me. That's just me. I want to limit test the man god here. Oh, man, you're making me come up with so many questions, SP. This is why I needed you here. You have me, like, fucking running miles, bro. You have, you're have you living rent-free in my head, and that is not good, my friend. That is not good. Kind of reminder, we still have half the trailer. This is why you remind me of what I really am. <laughs> All right, you ready, man? Let's start from the beginning. Yep. <laughs> Appreciate it. We haven't even got to the good parts yet <laughs> of the trailer. <laughs> うん、
彼女が俺を助けてくれたように今度は俺がシルフィーの望むことをしてあげる番だ。見ていてもらえるように頑張らないとね。シルフィーは俺に大切なものを取り戻させてくれた。My mind went into some fucking horrible area for a moment. 今度は俺がシルフィーの望むことをしてあげる番だ。My, my mind, okay, I, I might get canceled for this. I don't fucking care. I'm gonna ask it. We're talking about this beautiful attribution and marriage and all these wonderful things that are happening. SP, I'm, I'm just gonna ask this straight up because I don't see any other way of wording this. Sophie, let, let, let's just go through it. So let's say Sophie gets pregnant. Mm -hmm. Let's say Orsted or the man god comes through, doesn't necessarily take out Sylphie, but takes out the child. In your opinion, what does that do to Rudius? Oh. I know, because I'm looking at this shot specifically. This is what got my mind going. This whole side hug. You know, the whole aspect of like, look at this beautiful shot in together and how close and cuddly they are. And I'm like, okay, number one, either Sylphie can die, right? Or number two, if they're doing it like rabbits, like you guys are saying, and something happens. Oh, I got you stun marked. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I was kind of thinking about the question in deeply and then kind of thinking about <laughs> the rat. <laughs> Wait, what? Because what you ask is a very interesting question. And、yeah. the question comes down to what if the rat comes for everyone?、Uh, don't come on. <laughs> <laughs> no prisoners taken, no one saved,、oh, but the rat、gosh. comes with merciless hatred and animosity and destroys everyone. What does this have to do with the rat? Wait, wait. Everything has to do with the rat, Ed. You don't understand. The rat is pivotal to everything. Bro. <laughs> This core leads into the rat, and then the rat leads into everything. Yumiko, not you too. Not you too, Yumiko. <laughs> Everything. The rat is the core of Rudy's life. It is the most pivotal moment of who he is in time and space itself. I hope you know how fucking terrified I am now. Like, you're <laughs> spitting fucking bars like you know this to be true. <laughs> and I'm over here just. What? Oh, okay. Okay. This is a monster of untold power and rippling effects. By the way, Yumiko, when are you going to make food next?、Uh, when are you going to invite me first off, Yumiko? That's right, public call out here so we can go enjoy some food. The rat is only the truth. So remind me again. You, ooh, I know, I know. We're stopping 25 seconds in, and we're like fucking 30 minutes in or some shit. I'll make you anything you want. And oh, here's my question for you. You were saying that Orsted is going back and forth. So, number one, does Orsted, I guess it's a very silly question, but I just need a, a yes or no. 24 analysis, hour analysis stream, yes. Does Orsted loop? I mean, in a conflict that is kind of never ending between a god. And someone that's clearly of a plane of power that is well above Rudy, is that not in itself just an endless loop of conflict of them playing tick for tack, using different pawn pieces to go at each other? And the question comes down to is why was Orsted out there with Nana Hoshi? What was he looking for? How is he able to just do things that he can do, move the way he does, fight the way he does? How powerful is he? And why is the man god so scared of someone like him? Like, if, the, if there is clearly a conflict between them and they are as powerful as they are, and the man god lives for as long as he is, clearly Orsted has a long lifespan. 
Mm. How long is this loop of conflict and what does it entail on a grander scale? And what pieces of the puzzle are being moved into place and how do you change that conflict? Is it just an endless loop in time or is it just a loop in the sense of constantly never ending conflict where countries rise and fall and how does that have a rippling effect? Like the man god clearly can see some things that are kind of like in the future because he's told Rudy, hey, take this path, take that path. So he clearly knows stuff are going to happen, which is why he's scared of Orsted, but why is he unable to clearly have a pinpoint on where Orsted is? What does Orsted possess that makes the man god so scared? Because to have the ability to be able to communicate almost with anyone and manipulate anyone, that's a pretty powerful ability. That's like that is a godlike ability. You have the power to manipulate entire kingdoms and empires and civilizations mm. throughout all the time. But yet, Orsted is the one thing that absolutely can petrifies him. Why? And what is their grudge? What did the man god do to make Orsted that pissed? You're hitting on, on, on mm, mm. you're hitting on some elements that are just like making me fucking salivate at the mouth now because I'm like uh, I'm about to go rah, 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 fucking trying to get at, at the truth here. Holy shit! Also, now, hypothetical be- is if Rudy was to conf- confront Orsted again and they were to fight, how would that fight look? How would Rudy be able to even come to a level to fight Orsted one on one or with others? Is it on his own or is it with others or is the man god going to help him? And how is that fight going to look? Is it going to end pretty? Is someone going to get hurt in the process? Is someone going to lose a body part or something? And if that's the case, if Orsted was to possibly win, what would happen to Rudy or those around him? How would Rudy respond? What would Rudy say to them at Orsted? Would he curse him for all of time and forever be bitter or angry? Or would he beg for mercy and try to plead to him? So here's a wild fucking machination from, from the big old noggin. Is it just Orsted that can loop or can he have others do the same thing? Can he share that power or whatever that is? Ooh. So you're under the idea that Orsted has the ability to loop in some way. Correct. Okay. Then it comes down to a question of how big is that loop? What impacts that loop? Is there any impact? Is it just endless, never ending? What mm. can change it? Is there really a loop or is it just a loop in the sense of, empires rising and falling new ones take the place new ones fall new powerful figures go into place and does the man god can see things well into the future can orsted see things into the future if orsted can see into the future then how does he see in the future is is he able to manipulate other people as well is this a game of tick for tack constantly moving different pieces of the pawn pieces and clearly you know, the man god is in this kind of clouded space where he can get into people's dreams, tell them what to do. Orsted has his own form of communication, but he scares people. So why does he scare people? What kind of thing is going wrong with him where people just are petrified? Is it just the raw power or is it something else? And then why was Nanahoshi able to communicate with him perfectly fine? Why is Rudy able to communicate with him perfectly fine until he turned around and shoved a hand through his body? Why is Orsted there? What right. pissed the man god off or what scared the man god? And how would Rudy be able to communicate with someone like Orsted who is vividly determined to destroy him in every way? Because he's an apostle. Is he even looking into the future if that was the case or would it be multiple universes? So looking at the drawing, you're looking at the idea that Orsted could possibly splinter different timelines and 
constantly go back. I love that I don't even have to fucking explain this. I love you so much, man. Thank well, you. I can still explain this, so I'm like, I, I can really see what you're trying to do. It's it's kind of like that Steins Gate kind of thing where it's like, okay, he goes back and he goes, okay, well, let's do it this way. No, that doesn't work. Okay, let's go back. Let's do it this way. But the thing is, is if that's the case, and if, again, going hypothetically, if this is what he believes is what Orsted's power is, why is he failing? Why is Orsted constantly failing and failing and failing and failing? Is it because the man god just has this ability to kind of shroud himself in mystery, manipulate people, and kind of see a little bit more into the future? But again, why is the man god so scared? Why has he chosen Rudy to be his apostle? Because technically, Rudy is his apostle. Whether Rudy likes to admit it or not, Rudy is doing the will and the desires of the man god. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on in there because in, in comes in the next thing, right? Because we keep saying Orsted is the person that man god is most afraid of, but yet Rudy is the person that was brought into this world without man god's approval, and man god freaked the fuck out of like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, chat, I didn't say anything to him. He, so, he guessed that. He guessed that. So, He's wondering that. It comes with my question. If Orsted and Rudy were to fucking team up against the man god, wouldn't that be the biggest fucking scariest agent of change? Because technically, Rudy doesn't belong in this world and the man god has no control over this being. I have the slapping hand ready. <laughs> but it comes in the, the final thing, because if you're saying, oh, yeah, well, the man, like, clearly something's going wrong. The man god, that therefore, means can't take out Orsted, and Orsted can't take out the man god. And if this is a looping or even just a regular a parallel universe with a bunch of splits like that, it just means that they're, like, they're literally at, like, odds ends and can't fucking do anything without agents of change. You ready for this, Ed? Yeah, blow me away. Who's to say the man god is scared of, scared of Rudy or Orsted? Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Don't fucking do this to me. It's the rat god. <laughs> oh, my back. It's the rat god. <laughs> oh. anyway, anyway, shall we continue the trailer, brother? We're, we're, yep. we're 25 seconds in. And we're, 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 yeah, we're, so, we're so far into the theories. <laughs> we're not even in the same ballpark watching this i can already tell what the fuck i came in for a minute 22 seconds <laughs> all right let's I love go. It. it's great all right we'll back it up just to give them more shit <laughs> what is that 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 Oh man, I have questions for you. All lined up. <laughs> <laughs> he's got timeline theories over a hug. Bro, he's going insane. <laughs> <laughs> Chad, don't act like you're fucking surprised. I know you guys fucking missed going over some of these wild theories with SB at this time. I can't wait for Reddit to lose their shit over this. You, you know they probably are right. They're probably like, SB's fucking feeding him information and Chad is spoiling him. When like all of this, like logically speaking, from like season one and our season two core one analysis of like all the conversations we've had, it's just been a fucking buildup of information that like logically we've been going through <laughs> oh i'm getting my torch as we speak oh no oh oh wait hold on somebody said yeah uh, how much i missed it oh someone said i mean at this point ed's going to manipulate sp into spoiling himself <laughs> oh god so in comes in my question nanahoshi what happens if she can't get her final solution. That's an interesting question. Is is she capable alone to be able to solve this problem? 
Right. And if she can't solve the problem, what is that going to do with her mentally? Because she can't age. So she could be stuck there for all of eternity. She would just be timelessly sitting there watching the world. It'd be like free rent for her or free rent, however you want to pronounce it. She'd just be sitting there timelessly watching everyone come and go, her friends, her new friends, and then wondering if and when she'll ever meet her old friends. Okay, I'm going to ask this because now you're you're hitting on some things that are making me wonder. Is Nanahoshi a main character? Because to me, hold on, I'll finish my thought. To me, she sounds like what would be put in any other isekai as like a main character trope. You know, not not a trope, but like a main character that like, oh, she was sent to this other world and like, you know, is struggling to go back home and she doesn't age in this world or whatever. Like that sounds like main character syndrome. I don't know. A main character, at least. I think the writer is very good at creating many main characters in this story, and Rudy's just one of the major characters. Two of the main characters that oh, oh, mm. is interacting with all of these other main characters. Okay, I'm, I'm that I'm have the, major roles. I'm gonna throw this out to you out there because technically we're the main characters of our own life, and we're watching this through Rudy's perspective, so he is the main character. But the overall arcing story of the world in general, what role does Nanahoshi play? <laughs> what, I know... if, what if this conflict is a lot more grander scale than you realize could be absolutely because i'm over here i'm like to me she looks like a person that's out of place and if she were to stay here and say that Rudy were to just go go away she would literally be fucking frozen in time like Mentally speaking, developmentally speaking, you're talking about someone that has to witness so many fucking things, uh, go go past her that she's not able to go go ahead and physically age with it. That would suck, wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. Yep. Must protect Julie. Anyway, we'll continue, man. Because now, now you got my head fucking spinning, and it, it ain't pretty. <laughs> What is that, bro? What is that? Hold on. <laughs> that that face. Don't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a very touchy moment between two lovely ladies. It looks more than just that, brother. It looks more than just that. It looks, I, I don't know. Yuri on MT? No. This looks like a very, very sentimental meeting, as though it's like someone you're not expecting to meet. Like actual like tenderness. Bro, you they're both elves. Oh SP. Oh SP. SP 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 <laughs> SP. I'll ask I mean, it just to get the general question out of the way, I guess. Yeah. Are they related? How many kids Maybe. does Elena Elise have? I mean, Ellen Lisa said that she's had many kids over the years and she's brought them up and then kind of let them go on their own. So there's many <laughs> kids clearly out there and she's an elf. I read the comment, so, it's racist to think all elves are related. True. <laughs> but when you have a sentimental meeting like this... <laughs> Oh, no, SP. I mean, what what would make Emma Lee be brought to tears? I mean, she's a pretty hardy woman. She's been through some pretty heavy shit. I don't know, man. I don't know. That's where my mind is going to is what is it exactly is happening in this scene? Well, number one, are they related or not? Number two, what is happening in the scene for her to get the sentimental? Wait, her eyes? Same color? You're right. Hold on, SP. <laughs> Chat, I've been good here. <laughs> I've been good. I've been misdirecting him left, right, and center, and you go ahead and bloody say, "Look at his eyes! Look at their eyes!" Oh, Hold on, no, no, they have a fucking absolute point here. <laughs> All right, well, we'll continue. We'll continue. I'm an anime only cookie. Thank you, Danny. Thanks so much for the uh, sub. Appreciate it. <laughs> So how much of a role is Rudyard going to have in the development of these kids? Seeing as though he's coming back. I mean, he likes kids in a non-creepy way. 
Okay, you fucking scared me for a second, bro. <laughs> you terrified me for a solid second. <laughs> I was about to be like, oh, no, Twitter's going to come hard on this one. <laughs> oh, they still will anyway. Actually, yeah, they probably will still. Yeah. I mean, he does say in the anime that he um does like kids in a non-creepy way. He has that kind of... Uh, if you remember uh, Roxy's town, they always talk about how he likes kids and is very protective of them. That's why he protected Rudy and Eris when uh -huh. they were much younger. So clearly Rigid looks at kids with a lot of attachment and tries to protect them. So what kind of imprint is he going to have on these two individuals that he clearly has some type of connection with? And why is he with these kids? 100%. And what would lead the kids being sent to Rudy? Because in that shot, they're with Rudy sitting on the couch. So, so that, that brings why are the kids being sent? Where's Paul? Where's Paul? Is he banging maids again? Is he banging? He's trying to make another one. <laughs> <laughs> He's just fucking dead out there. And like, you see, uh, what's her name? The, I completely forgot uh, Aisha's uh, mom's name. For mom. some reason. Lilia, thank you, thank you. Lilia, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lilia's out there just smoking a cigarette, being like, Paul, you weakling. <laughs> Suck the life out of him. Yo, literally, bro. <laughs> but looking at this, though, like, it, it does make me wonder, where is Paul? What is Paul doing? I guess my fear is that, like, to send the kids over it kind of feels like you're, you're about to do something drastic and stupid. Considering they're supposed to be, like, you take care of them versus unless it's like, yeah, yeah, that still sounds weird. Even if you try and put it, oh, they're just trying to go ahead and uh, celebrate uh, Rudy getting married or something. But then why isn't he there if that's his son? Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. All right, backing it up, man. Also, Aisha, Aisha stepping up here to defend uh, Rudy. How much does she love Rudy? And is this something that's going to stay consistent even as she keeps growing? Like healthily or unhealthily? That's a good question. And what will Rudy do about it? As long as she doesn't fucking join his harem, I think we'll be good, right? <laughs> the harem of girls that people want me to fucking throw on here and be like, oh, we'll vote fucking Team Roxy, Team Eris, Team Sophie. It'll be fucking, what is it, Team Norn, Team Aisha, Team Espy. Oh, God. Aisha with the untilted hair. Team Zenith, Nick. Ooh. 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 You know what I'm thinking Team about? Lilith. <laughs> Team Lilith. Team Lilith. No, not for Rudy. <laughs> I'm so glad you thought you, you knew exactly what I was thinking. Oh, I'm backing it up. Sorry. This fight here that he's having. Mm -hmm. Is it a shit test or a real fight? And that's uh, in terms of like, for me, it, it seems interesting, like a character developmental point to have Rudy go through. It comes down to the question of what would make them fight. Would it be with malicious intent or would it just be something else? True. True. And so you got to ask yourself, what is, um, what is he like? Like, what is the relationship between him and, I forgot his name, not Rudy, of course. Luke. Uh, Luke. Luke and Sylvia's relationship. What is their relationship? How close are they? And what would lead Luke to getting into some type of sword fight with Rudy? Right. And clearly, the princess is there judging it, so. I will say this. Nana Hoshi in this site, getting cheered on by a group of, like, you know, friends, I guess, is adorable. We're seeing seeing people connect. That, that's cute. I ain't gonna lie. そして <laughs> What is that, bro? I have so many questions on that just itself. So stay. What is that, bro? 
I guess we're going to have to wait. We're going to have to wait till the episode. I don't fucking know. I can theorize a thousand and one things like feeling lonely because mom's not around, feeling lonely because dad's not around, traumatic incident happens. You have me. Mm. Arigato. What are these subtitles? Senate is the only one who won't suddenly disappear. Wait, is Pawn out there because of Senate? No way they would have just fucking dropped this at the last doorknob confession shit here. Yeah, what is the context that the last line was not translated correctly? Yeah, yeah what is the correct translation to that? I know Nick sent me a translation. Um, I, I can't open this up because if I do, it's going to jack up. I will time. read it. Um, the last three lines are, Rudy goes, I will never suddenly disappear. It's a promise, Sylvia. A promise it is, Rudy. Trouble rescuing Zenith, requesting help. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. That's the line. <laughs> Trouble rescuing Zenith, requesting help. Is that is is this gonna wait? All right, wait. Well, this doesn't sound good though. This does not sound good. Are we all gonna make it out of this? No, that's a spoiling question. I can't really ask that, can I? <laughs> Fuck. Fuck. Okay. Hold on. I'm. I'm my fucking. Okay. That is actually a pretty heavy line to drop. The last it second is. of the trailer. Well, that, that's why my brain's going fucking haywire at the moment. We know Paul's party went to go look for Rudy, right? Rudy is mm -hmm. now found. If Paul's party found Zenith, Roxy is traveling with Paul's party. Well, you got to remember from, I think it was last call, Roxy does know where Zenith is. So right. she was clearly going to link up with Paul's party. So high probability Roxy could be with the question is, why are they having trouble? Whose life is in danger? No, no, you have me fucking terrified. That, that clearly, trouble rescuing Zenith, clearly people's lives are in danger. So it's clearly obvious there that they're having an issue rescuing Zenith. See, now you have and they me need fucking, more assistance. Now you have me fucking terrified that either like a major character is going to fucking die, either Paul or Roxy. To chat, yeah, she knows... The general location, not the exact, but again, it's in a dungeon. So they know it's in a dungeon. So you have me fucking terrified, bro. It's one or the other now if you're saying that they like, what's in danger? It's either Paul or Roxy, brother, because clearly Rudy isn't there. Clearly Rudy's not there. According to this line, it's so hot. She's in Finland. I don't like sand. <laughs> uh, but overall, I do got to say, this trailer had a lot, man. This it does. Ooh. I feel like most yeah, no people, one cares about the dwarf. I feel like most people mo, I feel like most people would look at this trailer and just be like just pog out and be like, oh my god, let's go season two. But it's like it has a lot of discussion elements. And I feel like any trailer that's been dropped by Mushko Tensei has been the same with a fuck ton of discussion elements to uh It's very interesting what they showed in this trailer compared to the original first trailer. Now you kind of want, want, like, now I kind of want to go back and look at the first trailer and be like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I still remember when the last episode ended and I said, hey, you should go watch the old trailer and everyone in chat lost their mind and I got like 10 DMs <laughs> and they're like, no! <laughs> well, actually what I want to do is, I guess before season two, core two starts is look at the old trailer together of like all the other seasons and be like wait a minute wait the fuck up wait the fuck up oh Oruboros, thanks so much for uh the 1000 bits holy shit appreciate it man you go it is too good at this um no and honestly a lot of this comes just from like the discussion elements that fsb and i have had like if you think logically through it you keep connecting how realistic the author writes and how these characters interact with the world and the psychological elements that we've talked about on stream these characters are very fucking grounded. Like, very, mm. very grounded in reality. And the author's very good at hinting things early on in the story. 
that's something that I've noticed when going through the story multiple times, watching the anime multiple times. You see a lot of little hints, and if you sit there long enough and analyze them over and over and over again, and you piece little bits together, you can see there's like a general direction that the story is trying to push towards. Foreshadowing is crazy and empty. <laughs> it is. Oh, shit. It's very well done. But with that being said, I don't have anything else to add to that trailer. I think I'm excited. We're two weeks away, SP, and I'm excited for Mushiko Tensei Sundays. I hope you are as well. I hope you're ready for all the wildness and everything that might ensue. But, it's going to be uh, so fun. I, I, I missed having the original Mushiko Tensei days where we would chat, watch it, all the videos, all the analyzing, all the streams. It was so much fun. I brought it brought the community together so well and like everyone argued even on Reddit. Yes, I know some people out there like to go ahead and in and twist words and try and throw shit at SP or myself according to my mods. <laughs> Good old Mosco Tensei Sundays would chat off. Would chat off. Wow, look at that. I'm gonna make it a sub only chat if you guys are gonna be spoiling shit. <laughs> but through that, I'm excited, man. I'm so thrilled to go ahead and uh like, do this with you and do Core 2. And hopefully, if there's a Season 3, do Season 3 with you as well. Because, man, this is turning into a cat and mouse game. And I know for ReZero, I guess we'll be the uh, we'll be playing cat and mouse with uh, other people as well. So mm, It'll be really good. <laughs> but alrighty, ladies and gentlemen. With that being said, YouTube, I hope you guys like this. I hope this goes up pretty quickly. Guys, practice some fucking self-care. Come and join us. Follow SP at a spiritual analysis, the only one beautiful individual. I, we love YouTube him. We miss him. As well. Exactly. We're, you, you, both of us are YouTube approved, man. We yeah. went through reviews and we passed it. Hell yeah. Yeah, my video got approved in like less than 12 hours. It was insane. Because I sent it in and then I went to bed, woke up, and as soon as it, like, it was in, reviewed and done before I even woke up, I was like, you're like, whoa, wait a minute. I didn't know it worked that fast. <laughs> yeah. And I, I'm just beyond happy that YouTube, I guess, does recognize my channel as a psychoeducational channel. So that's fucking beautiful. I'll take that any day. I'll take that any fucking day. With that being said, YouTube, practice some self-care. Have a good night. Leave a comment. Help us the algorithm if you guys want to come and join us for those discussions. Uh, we'll see you guys here later.